Hello there, and welcome to the video. Today we will be looking into the life and works of Leonardo da Vinci, born 15th of April 1452. He is considered a polymath, which is defined as an individual whose knowledge spans a substantial number of subjects known to draw on complex bodies of knowledge to solve specific problems. He was active as a painter, a draughtsman, an engineer, a scientist, a theorist, a sculptor and an architect. Born out of wedlock to a notary and a lower class woman in or near the city of Vinci, he was educated in Florence by the Italian painter and sculptor Andrea del Verruccio. He began a career in the city, but spent much of his time in service of an Italian nobleman, named Ludovico Sforza. Upon invitation of the King of France at the time, Francis I, he also spent three years in France, where he died 2nd of May 1519, at the age of 67. Now let's look into some of the achievements and works he created. Painting He is considered to be one of the greatest painters in history. Despite many of his works being lost, he created some of the most influential paintings in Western art, with his masterpiece being considered one of the, if not the, most famous painting known to man, that being the Mona Lisa. He also painted The Last Supper, this being the most reproduced religious painting of all time. Another of his paintings, attributed whole or partially to Leonardo, is Salvador Mundi, which sold at auction for 450.3 million United States dollars, setting a record for the most expensive painting ever sold at public auction at time of recording this video. He painted many, many more, but as you will soon find out or already know, it is virtually impossible to list the complete body of work of this brilliant man. Drawing Aside from his many technical drawings, which I will mention later, he, he as a draughtsman was a match for even the greatest. His Vitruvian man drawing is someone considered as a cultural icon, and this was also sent into space. Leonardo da Vinci's Codex on the flight of birds and many of his drawings flew aboard the Curiosity rover on its mission to Mars. He also drew self-portraits, caricatures, he drew architectural plans, studies of proportion ratios, notably the head and the eyes, and pictures about anatomy that will come up again later in the video. This among many, many other drawings, as you will probably get is a bit of the theme with this polymath. Sculpting. Leonardo da Vinci was also a highly talented sculptor, although this medium is lesser known within his overall career due to a lack of output. Da Vinci's work within this field would advance his paintings and drawings as well as vice versa. Da Vinci devoted much of his time to sketches for two specific sculptural artworks, namely his bronze equestrian statue for Francesco Sforza and also a monument for Marshal Trivulzio. Neither of these two projects would ever be completed, due to a number of different reasons. The deep level of planning Da Vinci would go into for these planned pieces is underlined by how he would even design the vehicles that would carry the completed works to their destination. We are only left contemplating what could have been with his work in this genre. Anatomy and Physiology Leonardo started his study in the anatomy of the human body in the apprenticeship of Verrucchio, who demanded that his students develop a deep knowledge of the subject. As an artist, he quickly became a master of topographic anatomy drawings, many studies of muscles, tendons and other visible anatomy features. Eventually, he was given permission to dissect human remains at the hospital of Santa Maria Nuevo in Florence, and later in hospitals in Milan and Rome. Leonardo made over 240 detailed drawings and wrote about 13,000 words towards a paper on anatomy. Only a small amount of the material he eventually gathered was published, most of it being far ahead of its time. If published, it would have undoubtedly made a major contribution to medical science. Leonardo also closely observed and recorded the effects of age on the human body, also emotion, in particular the effects of rage. He drew many figures who had a significant facial deformity or signs of illness. Leonardo also drew the anatomy of many animals, dissecting calves, birds, monkeys, bears as well as frogs, and then comparing their anatomical structure to that of humans, as well as doing a number of studies on horses. 
Leonardo's dissections and documentations of muscles, nerves, vessels helped to describe the physiology and me mechanics of movement. He was the first to define atherosclerosis and liver cirrhosis. He created models of cerebral verticals, which are four interconnected cavities in the brain, with the use of melted wax and constructed the glass aorta to observe the circulation of blood through the, or through the aortic valve by using water and grass seeds to watch flow patterns. Vesalius published his work on anatomy and physiology in the human Humani Corporis Fabrica after his death. Technical Ingenuity During his lifetime, Leonardo was also valued as an engineer. He did this with the same rational and analytical approach that moved him to represent the human body. Those studies and projects together fill more than 5,000 pages. To the Lord of Milan, he wrote that he could create all sorts of machines, both for the protection and siege of a city. When he fled from Milan to Venice in 1499, he found employment as an engineer and devised the system of movable barricades to protect the city from attack. In 1502, he created a scheme for diverting the flow of the river Arno. Leonardo's journals include a vast number of inventions, both practical and impractical. They include musical instruments, a mechanical knight, hydraulic pumps, reversible crank mechanisms, finned mortal shells, and a steam cannon. He was fascinated by flight for much of his life, producing many studies including the codex on, on, of the flight of birds, as well as plans for several flying machines, such as a flapping ornicopter and a machine with a helical rotor. In 2003, a documentary by the British television named Leonardo's Dream Machines made various designs by Leonardo, such as a parachute, a giant crossbow. Similarities between Leonardo's illustrations and drawings from the Middle Ages, as well from ancient Greece, Rome, the Chinese, Persian empires and Egypt suggest that a large portion of Leonardo's inventions had been conceived before his lifetime. Leonardo's innovation was to combine different functions from those existing drafts and set them into schemes that illustrated their utility. By reconstituting technical drawings, he created something new. In his notebooks, Leonardo first stated the laws of sliding frictions in 1493. His inspirations for investigating friction came about in part from his study of perpetual motions which he correctly concluded was not possible. His results were never published, and the friction laws were not rediscovered until 1699 by Guillaume Admonton, with whose name they are now usually associated. Add to that the schematics on how to collect concentrated solar power and adding a machine, basically a calculator, very few of his inventions were actually feasible to construct during his lifetime, as, an, as engineering was only in his infancy. Some of his smaller works, however, entered the world of manufacturing, such as an automated bobbin winder, in which the crankshaft rotates the bobbin and connected rod moves the bobbin back and forth continuously so that the thread is evenly spread around the bobbin, as well as a machine to measure the tensile strength of wire, among many, many others. Architecture As we have now established, Leonardo da Vinci was an artist who painted some of the most beautiful paintings of all time. He was also a man of science who took a logical approach to solving problems. These two sides of Leonardo da Vinci came together in his architectural drawings. He drew designs for building bridges and even whole cities. His drawings give us an idea of the workings of a building, not just its outward appearance. His designs for buildings include magnificent castles, cathedrals and chateaus. His sketches include details about imported architectural elements like doors, windows, staircases and walkways. Some of them even include out-of-the-ordinary features like four-way and spiral staircases. Leonardo also drew designs for whole cities. His designs built on the ideas of earlier city planners who designed their city in geometric shapes and then surrounded them with a city wall. He saw the drawback of this type of design. In a traditional walled city, everyone and everything was enclosed within the city walls. Everyone was in close quarters and that led to problems. Disease spread quickly and the build-up of garbage was another problem resulting from the crowded situations. Leonardo addressed these problems with his new ideas for city design. He was involved in redesigning the Cathedral of Milan and at the time was living just opposite the site. 
Late in his career, da Vinci would put together architectural plans for a royal residence at Romoratin in France. The artist had himself spent several years as a guest to the King of France in Amboise, before being persuaded to take on this project. This complex design would incorporate enough buildings to be considered a village, but the most grandest of village of, at that. These would be a series of buildings interspersed with gardens that crossed the Sandre River. Though soon after da Vinci's death, these plans would be abandoned. While much of the artist's work for this project has been lost, there has been considerable research that has been able to locate various bits of information within his own manuscripts. The intended location for this series of buildings was found. He often wrote in shorthand, also called stenography, that he invented himself, which is a system for rapid writing that uses symbols or abbreviations for letters, words or phrases. He also mirrored his writing. Oddly enough, that concludes our only brief trip in the life of Leonardo da Vinci. While it would be a monk's task to mention everything Leonardo accomplished during his lifespan, seeing how much he had achieved in his 67 years of life, I would say that it's fair to say that he is at least a, a contender for smartest man in history. Some might have been smarter, but few were able to materialize it in the way Da Vinci was able to. As always, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. You can let me know in the comments which story you want to see covered next. Thank you for watching, and if I don't see you again, have a wonderful life.